You may disagree with me, but I'm convinced that if everyone got $1 million overnight, everything would go back to exactly the way it is right now in about five years time. It's the exact thing that happens when someone wins the lottery and ends up right back in the same financial situation just a few years later. And that's because everything we do, everything we accomplish in life, everything we fail at are a direct result of our habits, good or bad. And no matter how small or insignificant these habits may seem, they impact our future. And today we're gonna to focus on the bad money habits that you might not even realize that you're doing and I'm gonna show you how to break them before they break you. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. Let's get into this video. What we do on a daily basis boils down to one thing, how we think, because that determines how we operate on a subconscious level. That's how our habits are formed. Think about the last time you had to think about getting dressed or taking a shower or brushing your hair. These are habits that we do on a daily basis with very little thought. And those are examples of good habits, but an example of a bad habit would be checking your phone every few minutes. But that's not something that you think about. It might even seem harmless, but when you look at the amount of time the average person spends on their phone per day, you'll see that by the end of the week, they're spending well over 35 hours on their phone. That's about a day and a half of time per week spent on a phone. What would you do with an extra day and a half of time? You see, there's an opportunity cost attached to that, and we'll get into opportunity costs in just a second, but you know what also seems harmless? Hitting up a fast food restaurant right after you just got finished grocery shopping. And look, I've been guilty of doing this too, but I'll be straight up with you. It just doesn't make sense. Imagine you just spent $100 at the grocery store and majority of that money was spent on food. When you look at the food per serving, it's way cheaper than going out and getting a quarter pounder with large fries and a Coke on the side. I mean, you just bought food. You just bought beef, buns, and everything you would possibly need to make a burger and fries at home, which by the way, would taste 10 times better and it would be healthier for you. Yet you're driving with your groceries in the back seat and you get the bright idea to stop by McDonald's on the way home. Do you see the logic in that? And look, I get it. The whole point is convenience. You probably don't feel like going home and cooking after a long day of grocery shopping, but guess what? Convenience is one of the biggest reasons people go broke. And I'll never forget, one time I was on the phone with a friend of mine and he was like, yeah, man, I just finished grocery shopping. Now it's time to go get something to eat. And I was dumbfounded. I was like, S something to eat? What, what do you mean? You just, you just got groceries. What, what do you mean something? you know what, all right, you know, I gotta go, you know what I'm saying, you, you have a good day, bro, you have fun. <laughs> but it's that habit that gets so deeply embedded in your mind that you don't see an issue with it. When bad money habits become as natural as walking from one place to another or tying your shoes, it's easy to see why it's so hard to break the very habits that make you go broke. And it's no different than the habit of spending more money than usual the few times you earn a little extra money throughout the year. And I'm talking about overtime at work, I'm talking about bonuses at work, and I'm talking about tax refunds. You know how people get all excited about their tax refund checks and then about a week later you see all kinds of new things. You see designer clothes, you see the family going out to eat more often, you see all these fancy new kitchen appliances. And before you know it, that refund check is done. But at a much larger scale, and I see this far more than anything else, is upping our expenses to match our pay. And I'm talking specifically about raises and promotions at work, even overtime at work. It's almost like we've been conditioned to want to make more money so we can live a better lifestyle, only to increase our expenses as we earn more money, which literally just keeps us in the same exact situation where we can't save money at all, which is not a better lifestyle, but an illusion of a better lifestyle because now you're in a slightly bigger place. You're eating slightly better food, driving a slightly nicer car, all for a not so slight price. So sure, you might feel more comfortable, but if you've increased all of your expenses just because you're getting paid more and you still live paycheck to paycheck, guess what? Your financial situation has not changed at all. The only difference is you feel more comfortable. Was it worth it? And I'm honestly asking because anytime you put yourself in that position and you lose money, like let's say they cut overtime at work or let's say you get demoted or something, now you automatically put yourself in a position of, oh my God, what do I do? Now you're scrambling to see what your next move is and that's not cold. That's a very weak position to put yourself in. Yet, it's very easy to turn a blind eye to the very habit that is that detrimental to your life because it's been so deeply programmed into your subconscious to the point that it becomes as natural as breathing. 
That's why if everyone got their bank account stripped today, I mean started from absolute zero and were all given $1 million from scratch, mostly everybody would go right back to their exact same financial situation they're in today because if you can't handle $35,000, $65,000, you won't be able to handle a million dollars. Listen, High earners who know how to save their money and put their money away have a different set of standards and priorities than those who don't. Think about it, bro. What do people between the ages of 18 and 30 do with extra money they earn? Do they spend it on going out, on some shoes, designer clothes, video games, Gucci products? You know how they make those Gucci bags and they're like the tiniest book bags ever, but you see guys wearing them. But every time I see guys wearing them, they be empty. They don't have nothing in them. They definitely don't got no books in them. So I'm thinking to myself, if you got a book bag with no books, bro, ain't nothing in there. And I find that very concerning. <laughs> but you get the point. We spend money on things that we don't need as an act of habit. And it's all because we create a false abundance mindset based on what we have currently. And the big reason that this happens is because as a nation, really as a world, we lack understanding of what the numbers in our bank accounts actually mean. We lack true understanding of the amount of money we make per year, what that number actually means and what it represents. Your belief of what a million dollars is is going to directly impact how you treat that million dollars once you earn it. Why do you think lottery winners go and buy million dollar houses and then five years later they're broke? because they lack the mindset and understanding to apply proper money principles to create a sustainable and enjoyable lifestyle. Instead, it's much easier to act a fool and spend your money on whatever you want to without even checking to see what kind of impact each financial decision you're making has on your life and your future. And you know, that bad habit stems off the fact that the good habit of checking your bank account on a regular basis doesn't get done. Like in America alone, 64% of the population does not check their bank account balances on a regular basis. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. I check my bank account balances every single day, but the one time I didn't, my account actually went into the negative. And that was purely my fault because I was transferring money between my accounts, but I didn't even check to see how much I was transferring. I just kind of mindlessly did it, and I didn't even check to see how much would be left in my other account if I were to transfer that amount of money. And because I didn't check it and I wasn't mindful, I went into the negatives. So if you look at 64% of Americans, who's to say that they actually know where they stand financially? Look, I know a lot of people and they're very transparent to me and they'll even jokingly say, I don't even want to check my bank account balance. I already know that's low. It's, it's probably in the negatives. Or they'll say something like, I probably only have like $20 or $2. I'm scared to look at it. That's serious. In fact, this one girl I know went to swipe her card at Starbucks thinking she was going to get herself a $4 cup of coffee and her car got declined all because she didn't check that balance. And this isn't to be judgmental or anything. Like I said, I've done this myself before, but I'm just giving you the harsh reality. I'm expressing it to you, how harsh and how weird it feels and how embarrassing it can be to have negative money in your bank account and you're swiping your card. And this is the very habit that can make you go broke because how can you make financial plans if you don't even know where you're standing financially? If you don't even know how much money you have in your bank account, how can you then make financial plans. And that's the thing, bro. Even the ones who do regularly check their bank accounts, how many of them have a financial plan for themselves? And look, these are two big financial mistakes that I've seen in real time, and they will both set your future back by decades. Check this out. A lot of men and women want to hold on to as much of their money as possible to a fault. And that's exactly why I made that video called the problem with saving money, because half of us aren't even saving money correctly. And it's because of a phenomenon I like to call thoughtless saving. It's when you develop a habit of saving money, but you have no true aim or purpose behind saving that extra money besides literally just having a few extra dollars at the end of every month. And because we operate off of the mindset of, oh, I have to save, 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 you don't want to put your money anywhere else. And what does that cause? That causes hesitation. What do we do? We hesitate. We hesitate on putting money into investments. We hesitate on putting our money into accounts that we do not touch while we allow our money to grow and compound over time. And that's a big reason why most adults today are going to have a very hard time going into retirement because the retirement funds currently are not large enough to outlive them, which means they're going to have to continue to work well into their 70s and in some cases for the rest of their lives. Let me ask you something. 
Why does this problem exist? Because we want it right now. We want to hold on to our money right now. We want it all right now. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, that instant gratification is a money killer. And I'm talking from straight up experience because before I understood the value of a dollar and I wanted something, I would work and work and work until I got however much money I needed to buy whatever I wanted. And this was me when I was 10, 11 years old. You remember when those Nintendo DSs came out and when the PlayStation Portables came out? I was all over those. I put in all kinds of work to get the money to buy those little handheld game systems. But you know what? After I bought the game systems, I didn't have any money left over. I didn't even have enough money to buy games for them. All because I was so focused on getting the game system that I didn't even realize I would need extra money as well to buy games for them. How am I going to play it with no game? I was distracted and blinded by my own instant gratification. You see, that's what's happening right now. You see, instant gratification has a very genius way of distracting you with just your wants to the point where you're walking into your future blindfolded and you're thinking you're walking a straight path, but you're about to fall and you don't even know it. You're about to fall right into a money pit, but you don't see it because all you see is what you want. You don't see the future after you get what you want. And that's what I want everybody to look at. And that's buying a house before you're ready because all you can see is the beautiful house, the butterflies and the rainbows and everything and the white picket fence. That's all you see. So when you buy the house before you're not ready, but then something breaks, let's say you need plumbing or your AC just went out, now you feel like life done dealt you a bad hand and you're sitting around with your lip poked out trying to figure out how you're gonna come up with the money to pay for all of this. Because all you saw was the house, not the potential expenses that could come with the house. And that's buying a German luxury car, like let's say a BMW, but then you look at the price of what it costs to get regular car maintenance done on it, then all of a sudden your jaw drops and you're over there sweating talking about some, oh man, that, that sure is expensive. Excuse me, I didn't tell you to buy the car. See, when you're eyeing that nice car across the street and you're thinking about how you would look in one and how good it would smell when you get a brand new version of it and you have the new car smell and you think about how smooth it'll look with the nice leather seats and you think about how fast it'll go, you're not thinking about anything else but what you want. You're not even thinking about the future cost of that car and you're definitely not thinking about how much that car is going to depreciate within the first year. But the reality is car maintenance is going to be expensive if you have a German car facts. So what I'm saying is you're completely blind to the fact that you're going to continuously be putting money into your car while it depreciates. That's a money pit that drains your bank account. You know, the worst part about instant gratification is the fact that the motive behind getting what we want actually has nothing to do with us. Nine times out of 10 is to get compliments and validation from others because part of human nature is caring what other people think. But we take it a step further by caring so deeply about what other people think that we set ourselves up for financial failure trying to keep up appearances. All with no true aim or purpose besides feeling slightly more important. What I'm saying is you have to have a plan. And based off of that plan, you have to have a budget. Having neither of those is the little, seemingly insignificant habit that you don't even realize you're not doing. That's the one bad money habit that gives birth to all the other bad money habits that leave you broke and sad. And here's one thing I wanna share with you that doesn't seem like it relates to money, but I promise you it does. And I saved it specifically for last because if you've lasted this long, you really care what I have to say. Opportunity costs. It's time related and money related, which to me makes it 10 times more valuable than anything that I just talked about in this video. And I know in the beginning of this video, I said I'd get back the opportunity cost in a second, and it's been several minutes. Ah, I know. Thanks for watching, though. But anyways, spending ungodly amounts of time on our phone, on Netflix, ungodly amounts of time drinking, ungodly amounts of time with the wrong person or video games, or people who frankly aren't even worth your time. Think about what opportunity cost is attached to that. That amount of time you spend doing all that stuff could be worth thousands of extra dollars a year for you, or even just an overall peace of mind. And I can't emphasize this enough. Outside of the 35 hours that most of us spend on our phones anyways, think about the amount of time you spend around people that you don't even wanna be around. Or maybe you are spending time with people that you want to be around, but maybe you're just spending too much time with them. 
You know what I mean? Like as introverted as I am, I can be a big people person when I want to be. And especially when you're talking about having a really good conversation and you're both aligned. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about that. I could sit and talk to you for hours and hours and hours. But there has to be boundaries with friends, with significant others even. There has to be boundaries with family members. There has to be boundaries. Without boundaries, you find more and more of your time escaping you every single day until the end of the year comes and you're trying to figure out why you haven't achieved any of your goals at all. And you know what? I've been there. It was two years ago to be exact. But guess what? That opened my eyes to a world of opportunity that I never knew existed. And I want to open that exact same world to you. With that time, you could be going home and building an empire. With that time, you could be arming yourself with knowledge and skills. With that time, you could be earning more money for yourself. But even if you didn't want to do all of that, with that time, you could spend it relaxing, resting, taking care of yourself, eating good, working out. Those are invaluable. Your health, your mental health, your physical health, that is so important in life. You literally can't do anything without any of those things. So that opportunity cost you spend doing all those other things, really reconsider redirecting that time. And I encourage you to really look at it from that perspective because I didn't gain that perspective and look at life in that way until I was already 22 going on 23 years old. Even though I spent most of this video talking about how bad money habits can make you go broke, I want you to understand something. Time and money are spoken of in the same exact way. You say things like, I need to make time. I didn't have enough time. I wish there was more time in the day. You need to budget your time just like your money, bro. And that's how you do it. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so that you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.